this Fellows. is the development of football, Unit 12, uh, Pure 1, and 1. Uh, so first off, we're just going to start with like a brief history. So uh, we start in 300 BC where, uh, in China, where a game called uh, Kuju was played. And basically what it was, uh, there was, like this image shows, uh, there was uh, like a hoop or a shape, put the ball through, except, uh, raised up on poles. And then uh, also in the 12th century, uh, football came pretty big. And by the 16th century, uh, whole villages were playing against each other. And I'll come on that um, later. But also in the 16th century, uh, in Italy, people were um, playing a type of game where there was a lot of people, 54 on each side. And the uh, there was a ball and a goal, but they mainly uh, went for each other and they punched people and stuff like that and uh, yeah so continue on with a brief history uh, the game was adapted in public school schools by uh, school boys and uh, they started to think of like some rules to basically get to the game where we were today uh, basically sev several rules came in called the she Sheffield rules and that was in 1875 and this was because uh, they were made by uh, Sheffield FC, which was the first uh, football club. Uh, basically what happened was, to make up the general rules, was uh, that in 1863, uh, some of the first football teams met in London to uh, clarify uh, the rules, but then some people disagreed on that they wanted to use feet and others wanted to use hands. So after this outcome, we came out with two uh, sports called rugby and football. Uh, in 1870, that's when the uh, first goalkeepers were introduced and it became, also became more of a passing game instead of just uh, running with the ball. Uh, in 1871, uh, that was the first FA Cup. And in 1875, uh, crossbars were introduced and all they were were two poles and then a uh, string a lot across to the um, both poles. And uh, in uh, football games started to last uh, 90 minutes in 1877, and also referees started using whistles instead of handkerchiefs in 1878. So, uh, last slide on this. Uh, in 1891, penalty kicks and linesmen's were introduced, and in 1894, people uh, football was taken to Brazil by a Scotsman, and it became uh, quite popular and became like one of the, their national sports. And in uh, in 1914, uh, football became popular with women. This was due to the war, and most men went off to fight in the war. And then, as the women took their roles, like in farm work and stuff, uh, basically when they had uh, spare time and they wanted to um, do something, they started playing football. And um, so it uh, quickly became popular in the years between uh, 1914 and 1921. And I think there was uh, also a charity game where uh, like 50,000 people attended. Uh, in 1938, the first World Cup was held in Uruguay, and many of the European teams to show up due to uh, transport issues and having to come against that country. And of course, uh, 18, uh, 1966, sorry, uh, England won the World Cup. So, agricultural society, uh, well, basically, this is where people started creating them kind of games like we looked on the first line uh, to uh, space and fill in their uh, free time and uh, the one I was talking about where in the 16th century in England people start playing against each other was called mob football and this is where a thousand people fight over one ball and basically the goals are three miles apart and there's only one goal in the game so the first one to score wins basically and uh, that they don't really have to kick the ball but they are allowed to throw the ball in like it can get violent and people die in the old times, but now they still play this game and it's game less violent. But uh, basically, they're allowed to take the ball anywhere as well, like on roofs and through rivers and stuff. Uh, there's a link to the video, but we'll move on to uh, another game that they created, which was cheese rolling. And basically, that's where you have Steve Hill. They roll a block of cheese down it and people uh, chase. It was just another game they played just to keep off the fight. Uh, so, on to the Industrial Revolution. In the 19th century, football became a big, uh, big and uh, became a part of everyday life. Uh, how it changed football was uh, workers moved into factories from going to, um, from working in fields due to material wealth, and uh, basically the game became, uh, the game has changed because uh, people 
a less time outdoors, meaning that they can uh, leave this work as easy. Uh, and it also meant people just couldn't get together and over time different uh, groups developed their own different types of the game. Yeah. Uh, also, it, brought, it improved it a bit by transport as well because uh, through the Industrial Revolution it meant that teams could get across the country easier, easier and play in leagues. Uh, how the world wars affected it? Well, uh, it had a negative effect because uh, many men had to go and fight the world war. So that meant like FA Cups and Football League were suspended. And uh, also like um, there was like regional competitions were set up for big play, um, players appearances like in those tournaments did not count on records because of course like no one was keeping track. Uh, some, for example, some, some leagues like uh, Swiss League uh, basically uh, still went on, but like 5,800 5, players out of 8,500 players went to fight in the war and uh, basically the league started to die out and as the pitches were destroyed and turned into potato farms uh, later on after the war. Uh, and then because of this, the Swiss national team did not play until 1920 in like World Cups and stuff. So uh, there was one English club who was meant to play their first ever match on the 5th of September 1914, but because of the outbreak of the war, they couldn't. So on the 20th century, uh, people started playing on uh, fields and then moved on to pitches. These pitches were just grass and mud, but, so they were quite low quality. But in nowadays, they're part plastic and part grass, which makes it a better, better playing surface. Also in the 20th century, Hooliganism uh, uh, came a big part, and uh, one disaster was where English fans was like uh, caused the death of eight and thirty-nine Juventus fans, and due to this uh, fact, that it led to English teams being banned from the European football for five years, and Liverpool, uh, because of their fans, were banned for six. So organisations are linked with football. We have FIFA, and they were founded in 1863, and uh, their aim is just to uh, be an effective and professional organisation for the greater good of uh, football. And there's also another fact where in 1885 they introduced professional players, so that's when it came a career and you could get paid for it. Uh, FIFA was uh, founded in Paris in 1904, and its goal is basically to uh, uh, to in to like bigger its status and uh, in and improvement of football. And UEFA was introduced in 1954, and basically they unite European teams to bring them together through football, and uh, also they and they hold the biggest uh, cup event, which is the Champions League. Uh, the LMA was founded in 1992, and basically uh, it's all the managers from the English leagues, and it represents their like voices to so what they want, what they get out of football, uh, and uh, also. The PF, PFA was founded on December the 2nd, 1907, and their aim is to um, improve the conditions, rights, and status of professional players. And, and basically, this means like uh, say if they have an injury and stuff like that, uh, they find them like on the jobs or the alternatives afterwards. And the Premier League was uh, in 1992, and 20 clubs split from the Football League to form the Barclays Premier League, which we now know as today. And uh, they split from the Football League, which was 1888, and uh, it holds the championship, League 1, League 2, and it consists of the old first division. Uh, so, uh, Sport England was 1977, and they focused on helping people get into sport through projects in the community. Uh, we have the National Lottery, which gave money to local clubs so that they can fund. Uh, uh, pay their players to um, make the um, space yeah. stadiums better and also help get child off the streets mm -hmm. through like programs what we're in like uh, not counting the community. Uh, also Sport uh, England was created in 1997 and by uh, investigation in like great, uh, the Great Britain's mm -hmm. Olympic team and Paralympic team. Uh, and athletes to achieve their full medal winning potential, so basically they just help them be the best they can. Uh, the Football Foundation receives money from the top professional games, so the Premier League, and uh, they use the money to leverage even more uh, partnership funding uh, to, live, to 
deliver programs in the community through like sporting facilities like the Astro Turf locally here at uh, South Ross Academy that's funded by uh, this one and then also the Football League Trust was in 2007 and it used the power of football to improve um, people's lives and also the BCMS is responsible for culture and sports in the UK. Good.